Hey everybody, it's Brian. Um, we're not really going to go over any source code today. I just wanted to go over the newest version of Qt and some of my thoughts. Uh, be sure to visit voidrealms.com. Um, most of the source code is out there, but not all of it. Um, that's why the epic fail banner is still here. Um, if you feel inclined, please donate. Been funded for another year, so um, thank you very much. You guys have been generous. Um, as you know, Qt is probably my favorite thing in the whole wide world next to pizza. Um, <laughs> um, 5.4 is out there and it can do an amazing array of things actually I'm installing the Linux version right now I call this patch day I have like Linda Windows uh, multiple versions of Windows I have uh, Mac multiple versions of Linux different distros so when Qt comes out with a new version it's a big deal because I gotta do a lot of downloading so uh, but anyways they can do a lot of things um, 15 platforms all on one framework 95 percent satisfaction guarantee 800,000 users. That's a large number of developers. Now, you may look at that and go, well, pfft, that's nothing compared to like a Java or something like that. Well, yeah, but these are professional developers that can do some pretty cool things. They're not, you know, people just learning to program. I'm not trying to dog Java or Java developers, but you have to admit there's a bit of a learning curve with C++ and Qt that you just don't get in other languages. But um, first impressions, uh, in case you don't want to listen to me ramble, I think 5.4 and some of the polishing touches they put on is spot on. I'm really happy with it thus far. Um, it has kicked out a few errors and a few warnings when I first downloaded that. I will warn you that you know, when you download it, be sure to compile and test everything like you should be doing. Um, but it, it's been kind of interesting to see how Qt's evolved. I mean, it was Trolltex, then it was Nokia's. It almost got sold to Microsoft. Knock on wood, that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> not trying to diss Microsoft, but we all know what would happen there. They would just get rid of it in favor for .NET, which .NET's a great platform, but come on, doesn't run on everything. Um, they're really pushing HTML5, web, mobile, graphics, connected devices. Um, Qt Creator got sped up. Uh, some projects, oops, sorry, I just hit the microphone. Some projects that took literally like 10, 15 seconds to open now take like two. Uh, they've made the the GUI much more responsive. But um, if you go to download, it'll say it's 100% awesome. I totally agree with that. It is 100% awesome. And you'll see they want a 30-day trial. Whoa, what's that? Hit the brakes. But that's for the commercial development. So just know they're really pushing this model here, their new licensing model. We're going to go over that super quick. There's the community version, which all of my future tutorials will be based on, simply because I don't want people to have to pay money to learn. That's just stupid. Knowledge should be free. Um, now, I'm not saying you shouldn't invest in these. I'm seriously considering doing the professional development suite, because it's only $149 a month or 109 euros. I say only, I'm not rich by any means, and that is a good chunk of money. But if you're doing professional programming and you have customers and you're getting paid for your work, you can offset that cost to your customers. Same thing with the indie mobile developers. It's only 25 bucks or 20 euros a month. Um, now I say that's not much, but if you're in a company, a company, sorry, a country like uh, South Africa or Uzbekistan or Tehran or Iran, uh, that's a lot of money. That's probably more money than you're making in, I want to say, a week or two or even a month, depending on where you are. Just know the community version can still do a lot of this. You can still work with Windows, Linux, Mac OS X, Android, iOS. I mean, you can still do these things. You just, you don't have the support, you don't have the tools, things like that. And I'm not going to go through this whole matrix, but there's some things I really wanted to pick out. Like with the professional version, you get cute cloud services. Um, that's actually pretty amazing. Um, basically, instead of saving a file onto your hard drive or the you know device's disk, you would, or N flash, whatever, you would save it out to the cloud. So you could just pull everything down. So if the device just gets stolen, smashed, whatever, as soon as they reinstall your app and log in, boom, you got all your files. Pretty slick. Um, you, of course, get cute essentials and stuff like that. You also get cute charts. This is something that kind of makes me mad. I wish it was in the open source version. You can get, you know, 3D visualization of data. You can get bar, graph, pi, all this other stuff. Um, pretty well done. Um, really, really wish it was in the community version. But hey, you know, I understand. It's a sales feature. Enterprise controls. Now, a lot of the cute quick stuff, some of you guys have been asking me, why don't you do cute quick controls? 
because a lot of the acute quick stuff has actually been pushed to the professional and enterprise versions and while you can still do it in the open source version to really do it right to really you know ease of use having tools profiling things like that you really need either the professional or preferably the enterprise um, you could say you could do it with the the indie but you know you get a lot more bang for your buck for the professional you also get profilers enhancements with visual studio embedded device creation um, you know just a whole bunch of stuff but by and large what you're really paying for when you're paying this is support you know how many times have you built something and it just doesn't work the way you expected it to that's what you're really paying for and wow my Linux installation is complete let's see if I can get this sucker to open here no nope, that's still the old version alright I'll have to hunt down <laughs> I'll have to hunt down the uh, where it put it well, actually it would probably be right there actually let's just go here and oh, look there's the community version right there let's verify this yep Qt Creator 3.3, Qt 5.4 um, you can see the UI is much more responsive and they've got the projects, examples, tutorials um, pretty well done I mean they've got some of their tutorials built right in here it would be awesome if some of my tutorials were in here but you know I'm not affiliated with uh, Nokia or sorry Digio or you know cute in any way examples um, a lot of the things you guys have asked me for like how do I do this how do I do that it's actually they're already in the examples so like if you type in like somebody wanted syntax highlighting well there's already an example in here syntax highlighting example and you can just open it right up and it's got notes and everything now some of these are kind of dated and I think that it would be a really good idea for them to go through and redo a lot of them but they're constantly adding new ones like they have a you know a quick demo calculator you know video games 2d painting the old clock this is like an old 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 example but uh, I mean there's just tons and tons and tons I mean look at this so I would encourage you when you're you're emailing me or somebody else saying help 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 I don't know how to do this just simply click examples and like um, if you're looking for sockets you know there's a whole bunch of socket examples even SSL so that's all for this tutorial um, thank you for listening to me ramble and I look forward to another year